Clay Thompson is scarily finding his flow, Jordan Poole's facilitating continues to reach new heights, and Stephen Curry's insane efficiency over the last five games could have some implications for where the dubs are headed. Here's a detailing on every reason for why the Golden State Warriors have the NBA nervous, and stay tuned for a film room breakdown on plays which led them to their ninth straight W. Right quick, only 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. From a fan's perspective, when your team's evidently better than their opponent, it can be difficult to get excited for games against rebuilding teams. It's 100 times more difficult for the players themselves to find motivation for those seemingly meaningless games. Of course, all 30 NBA teams present a threat, and every team competing in the most competitive hoops league on earth is there for a reason. However, when you have a battle-tested main core and head coach that's quite literally seen it all, there is a knowingness in the back of your mind that you can flip a switch and turn up your play when it matters most at will, which can lead to complacency at times. The dubs were up by double digits all night, until the Thunder ended up cutting the game to five in the final two minutes. But the Splash Brothers would take over in beastly fashion from there, as what Steph and Clay did in the final minutes to OKC should simply be a war crime. The possession right here sees Steph utilize a double ball screen with two perfect big bodies set by Thompson and Looney. With Wiggins and Poole in each corner, the offense is perfectly spaced out, allowing for a smoothly placed pin down from Kaban Looney, which gives Clay every bit of space he needs for the spot up three. Then, in an ISO, Steph would find Clay for a second consecutive time, and last but definitely not least, capitalizing off all of Golden State's floor spacing, the chef would give OKC's rookie Josh Giddy a welcome to the NBA moment, putting the Aussie in a blender with a vicious stop and go move. Steph lets it get down to five. Step back three. Ball game! <laughs> While the Splash Brothers saved their best for last, the young 22 year old Jordan Poole brought his A game from the moment Steve Kerr subbed him in. He only finished with 11 points on 8 shots, but had 8 rebounds and more importantly, had 8 dimes, with only 3 turnovers. He spent a considerable amount of time as the lead ball handler and shot creator, both for himself and for his teammates, and was given free reign to conduct the offense. The play sets that Jordan perfectly executed are next, but it's admirable how Pools seamlessly accepted and adjusted to a bench roll with Clay's return. Of course, he had no choice to move to the pine, but with how well Poole was playing in the starting five and the success Golden State was having, I could see a lot of young players struggling to come to terms with taking a back seat, not Deadpool, who's clearly wise beyond his years. The third year pro out of Michigan continues to brilliantly operate within the dub's intricate system and let the flow of the offense dictate his reads and decision making. You see flashes of Jordan fully grasping the developments and courses of action that are unlatched because of both the natural rhythm of warrior possessions along with what defensive game plans give him on any given trip down the court. In order to become a well above average facilitator, it's crucial to develop a second sight in terms of knowing how defenses will react ahead of time and responding to it accordingly. There's no better example of Poole displaying that elite sixth sense than on this dime. The nasty finish from Jonathan Kaminga over contact, garnering him an and one is what'll be known as the highlight. As we've talked about in several Warrior videos in the past, John's blend of athleticism and strength as a teenager is uncanny, and in this case, it helps him overcome the weak side help rotation from the low man, the O'Maladon. Jordan intelligently recognizes the double is on its way and has an instantaneous response, which is to make the quick pass to Kaminga. That play was scripted by Steve Kerr out of a timeout, but it takes near instantaneous processing to make that kind of pass, something Poole definitely showed off on that play. Strictly in terms of his playmaking bag, a quality that Jordan's also refining is his ability to execute precise dimes from various angles on the same possession. The amazing part about the dub's attack is that the versatility in their depth chart can place a certain player in the role of the facilitator on one play, but when they initiate the same action later on, that same player is able to play the role of the floor spacing three-point shooter or decoy. That makes the action we're about to look at a viable weapon. 
Right here, Golden State whips out one of their patented end of quarter plays, and there's two parts to this action. Firstly, the screen the screener, aka Ram screen. Curry sets a screen for Andrew Wiggins, who then sets a ball screen for Jordan Poole. But that fancy screening is only a distraction for the legitimate deadly action on the play, which is a down screen by Kaminga for Curry. And by now, we're all well aware what happens when Curry fluently manipulates a down screen, running off a pin down like he's Forrest Gump. Two defenders get magnetically drawn to him, and right here, that allows Jordan to find Jonathan on the slip. If you're wondering what happens when you place Poole in the same role of Curry in that action, opposing game plans manage Poole almost the exact same way they treat Curry around down screens. There's one key contrast on this possession right here. Curry makes the pass to Poole around the screen and two defenders attempt to trap Poole. Poole sees it coming though, nicely placing the pocket pass into Gavon Looney's roll path and Looney takes off like a slow ascending jumbo jet. Finally, Jordan's ability to manufacture whatever he wants out of a classic high pick and roll deserves its respect. The key to becoming one of the world's best playmakers out of pick and roll scenarios is being able to read and react to matchups and game plans using a variety of methods. Exploiting the low man helper is especially crucial to opening up the floor. Putting Air Canada in the left corner, where he's 36 of 66 on the year, chalking up to 54.5%, further proves the value of low man exploitation, which Poole is evidently well aware of. According to Joe V. Ray of SB Nation and Synergy, on pick and roll possessions that include passes, the Warriors score 1.017 points per possession when Poole is the ball handler. That ranks them at the top six among all 30 NBA teams. Jordan vamping his decision making and confidence as a lead guard has garnered him plenty of trust from the coaching staff to quarterback the offense. From a team standpoint, becoming a more dangerous facilitator gives defenses a hell of a lot more to think about. The more his playmaking vamps, the better chance he has at putting pressure on defenses as the bona fide pure bucket getter that we know he is. Once Poole reaches his peak as an NBA player, he'll have the perfect mix of passing and scoring chops, which in turn will force opponents to pick their poison. If that becomes a reality, it would be a safe bet to say that Poole's going to hit all-star status in the near future. What's Jordan Poole's ceiling? Best answer in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Devin Sedotal, who says the most shocking part about this team is how good Bobby Portis is. I always thought one of the Bucks' weakest positions was center, not that Brooke Lopez was bad by any means, but I always thought they could use more at that spot. Portis has been just what they need at the center position. He gives them a floor spacer similar to what Lopez did. He's an even better floor spacer than Lopez in my opinion. He's shooting the three ball at the highest rate in his career and most attempts per game at around five. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.